I don't want to go. <laughs> Last time on the Everyone Pink steals away magical girl powers and nothing else important. And in order to counter this, the guardian spirit Jim graces her with magical anime cat girl powers, as well as three companions that he isekai'd from their home world. An ancient evil corporation, EA, has been released upon the world and unleashes loot boxes and microtransactions upon the world. And in order to defeat it, recites the incantation that she saw on Reddit to defeat this monstrosity once and for all. Also, you should know the drill by this point. Now, I didn't have an advertisement to put here, but because of reasons, I have to move it to a different video. So, I'm just gonna advertise my channel all this time around. This video is sponsored by me. Press the subscribe button. That is all. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and OnlyFans. EA has finally done what no billion dollar corporation has done before. They've given money back to the common people, with absolutely no incentive to do so. Now, the EA has proven to the world that they really care about their customers. The people of next door were about to buy their products again, when suddenly an ominous voice echoes through the air and offers them a taste of despair. The camera cuts back to our hero entering the village to see that it wasn't just a disembodied voice offering free pairs. It was the Dark Lord who had stormed through the village and snatched the faces of half the villagers, then spread them around the desert. EA could even stand up to the Everyone Ping, proving once and for all that not even the biggest, most powerful corporate empires are in- the party is distraught by the horrific sight that they have just witnessed, but this is no time to panic. If we are to save the villagers, we must press on and maybe receive some kind of reward for our troubles. Onwards! These people need their help straight away. No time for distractions. Oh hey, it's Pepe the Frog. I haven't introduced him yet because... He presents us with a quiz that requires intense critical thinking and can only be solved by the most brilliant scholars on the planet. Because his brain is the size of Rhode Island, however, the puzzle was solved effortlessly and Pepe had to give up the incredible prize of five whole bananas. The party camps out for the night and tries out stargazing for the first time. Barry notices a shooting star in the distance, and naturally, when you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. Anything your heart desires will come to- Oh, hey, would you look at that? Dreams do come true. Walt Disney, probably. Wait, where are we supposed to be doing something? Uh... I don't remember, but it'll probably come back to me during a shower a week from now. Maybe. Probably. Who knows? For now, I think we should just ride through the desert and kill some scorpions until we figure it out. In the meantime, though, Mr. Beast and Barry go to karaoke, and Mr. Beast's singing is so lovely that Barry can't help but ask where he finds the time to practice. Apparently, Mr. Beast practices whenever he's on the treadmill, whenever he's fighting, and all the time, I guess. I must have just missed it then. And Hatterene train at the end to prepare for the threat that they probably don't remember exists. Then, Hatterene and Barry go to relax in a very long movie. It's so long that some of the viewers grow white hair and, uh, I think the game's audio is glitched. Listen. Oh wait, Hatterene was just dreaming. Or maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe this is just a giant nightmare that I'll wake up from at some point. The party eats a hearty meal, then sets out again. But it didn't take long until Barry lets everyone know that he forgot to eat breakfast. My bad. I should have made sure he ate before we left. Oh, Hatterene learns to take her flamethrower and shower <laughs> searing flames upon her enemies. Oh wait, this is the four kids sub I forgot. I'm not sure though why they replaced the fire with Mr. Beast's face. Hatterene then uses the power of science to materialize a banana out of thin air. Well, it's probably science. At least that's what every scientist character says when the writer doesn't actually know what they just did. Well, that's right, the plot. I had forgotten about it. What a massive snake what? appears to claim Kowalski's face, and the party is paralyzed in fear. But using the skills we've acquired during our time together, the Rico snake was no match for our might, and after taking a ketchup bottle to the face, Private's face is sent back to where it came yeah. from. And now that we've remembered what the plot of this episode was, it was time to go back to the caves to rescue Mona Lisa. But before we can find her, Mr. Beast tells about the most incredible dream that he had the night before. A mountain of money raining down upon him. A vision of the future where he has acquired all the money in Metopia after having previously claimed all the money on Earth in his previous life. Legitimately, though, this wasn't planned. The script actually just writes itself, and I both hate it and love it at the same time. Asks if it was really the best dream, but that's not a response that fits her character, so I'm going to 
edit this real quick, and uh, boom, that's more like it. Mr. Beast then learns that because Hatterene is a scientist, she basically has infinite money through research grants. I don't think this will ever come up again. Oh, sh**. Is that a pile of dirt? Mr. Beast, my actually though this joke was even funny the first time, but I'm a content creator, and I specialize in recycling unfunny content over and over again for ad revenue. Oh, and speaking of ad revenue... Oh, hey, he found money. Nice. And friends continue their trek through the cave. Mr. Beast trips over, and while I wanted to help, the game seemed to believe that it was more in character for her to completely ignore him. And so Barry went to help That's instead. Cool. Not that <laughs> disliked him or anything. She adores him. Uh, she adores him. She just really doesn't pay attention Yay! to anything going on. In fact, I'm pretty sure that if her party were to completely vanish one day off the face of the planet, she'd completely forget them without a moment's notice. <laughs> oh, hey, the plot again. This new monster claims the Mona Lisa and sticks it on fine wind, clear morning. I don't know, there's probably an art major out there who finds this hilarious. Mr. Beast goes into strike, but is immediately fascinated by the combination of paintings. This was the plan, by the way. And the Mona Lisa, fine wind, clear morning, punishes his curiosity, then immediately downs him on his turn. Oh, Incredibly lucky player, by the way. Oh well. This stuff happens sometimes. Okay, well, let's just go through the next turn. Cool. Well, okay, it's not that big of a deal. Hattering has dropped to 1 HP, but she's not dead yet. I can certainly get some big damage off of the claw sharpened attack. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the Mona Lisa Fine Wind Clear Morning, name's too long, we'll just call it Jim 2 for now. Due to unforeseen circumstances, Jim 2 is more difficult than it really should be. Yummy. It's time to put those Yummy. bananas we've collected to oh. use. Hattering decides to hold off on her turn due to her cautious personality. Uh. Barry then gives Jim 2 some ASMR. And Hattering uh. actually does something really cool by riding atop Maximus to output a massive 81 damage strike and you then do the same thing again for 44 damage, damage, absolutely annihilating Jim 2 and releasing the Mona Lisa back to her owner. Now, it's about time. Behold! Mr. Beast's new team uniform! Gaze upon his splendor for a solid 10 unedited seconds so I can pad my video's length! Next up on the agenda is the Great Pyramid, and we've already hit the point in a standard RPG where we're reskinning bosses and using them as standard enemies, which means that we are probably one third of the way through the game's story. I really don't know, this is just off the top of my head if I'm being honest. If you're familiar with the game, you already know that almost the entire rest of Next Door takes place in this pyramid, and I'd be lying if I didn't say this part is pretty boring to write, as you can tell by the amount of time between this video's release and last. There's really nothing of note since there's no big love triangle, no insane feud between party members or nobility, no new lore, no corporate empires to take down. But bear with me for just a moment though, because I don't plan on letting my $112,000 bachelor's degree in comedy writing go to waste, look among us. The party goes deeper into the pyramid to find more material for me to actually work with, and they come across the beautiful face of Lay Monkey that's implanted on the... Mona Lisa. I swear this was the plan. This fight is actually pretty disappointing because Barry performs ASMR in the Monkey Lisa, and the party vandalizes the ever-living shit out of it until there's nothing left to recognize except for the lovely face of Lee Monkey <laughs> flying freely into the air. When we arrive at the next inn, Mr. Beast decides to clean up the room they're staying in, and <laughs> decides to help in the best way she knows how to, by providing moral support. Four kids, who are actually the ancient gods of the land, I definitely didn't just make this up on the spot and throw it in the script since I've got nothing else to go on, decided that ketchup was too violent since red could indicate blood, and replaced Hatterene's ketchup bottle with a baby bottle that fires green milk and applies spicy milk to her teammates' weapons. She then notices two levers, and after pulling the right lever, the gods offer her some drugs as a reward. And now that I'm on a winning streak, I've gotta gamble again to kick my dopamine levels to a 10, and, well, that's a boulder. That's why I don't gamble. Mr. Beast finds... ...in the pyramid, and she gives us the answer to a puzzle that we haven't encountered yet. But I don't need to remember it, because when it shows up, I can just Google the answer. <laughs> just kidding. Googling it would be too easy. I use Microsoft Edge instead. There's actual skill in remembering that it exists. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, an impression of Barry! 
You like jazz? Comedy is my passion. The next set of bosses are Lois and Doug Dimodome, the owner of the Dimsdale Dimodome, and they transform into a $60 disappointment for the Nintendo Switch. We start the fight by dishing out some pretty solid damage, but these guys also really hit hard. The party is conflicted on whether they're fine or not, and jumps in with her new double slash move. Barry performs ASMR on Lois, and Mr. Beast rushes in for a massive hit, but stopped by Doug Dimodome, the owner of the Dimsdale Dimodome, just in the nick of time. Hattering craves a banana, so it's a good thing that Mr. Beast is ready and willing to give Hattering his banana- Mr. Beast heals Hatterene. Barry and his friends charge like in that, and completely like annihilate like Lois, yes. leaving hey, Doug on his own. And although the shield is extremely durable, it is by no means it. Now that Lois and Doug Dimodome, the owner of the Dimsdale Dimodome, have been freed, there's only one NPC left to save. EA. And to get into their chambers, we receive the four stones of four kids from the citizens that we freed. But before we can face the final boss of next door, we go gambling for a bit. Oh man, we got Wooly Claws. That is just so unlucky. Man, I don't know how unlucky I have to be to keep getting Wooly Claws, but I guess I'll just have to sell these. I was really hoping to get some fried cobra, no, no. but I guess I'll just have to take the exchange money on Wooly Claws. I did this for five minutes straight. I'll return when I have more arcade tickets. Now it's time to gear up and be ready for the fight ahead. We have have to be completely prepared because once we place the four kids stones and walk into the chambers we'll be face to face with a to deadly game. being a gaming empire now in deific form ready to smite the ants crawling beneath him oh he's already dead huh that was easy well so uh that's the entirety of next door not really exciting and overall pretty disappointing so you know what dark lord i will happily accept a reset and now, we can start again as an anime Tank Girl Magical Girl! Trademark symbol.